I was trying to think of something to call this video, and I think Rise from the Ashes is an appropriate title for this Sony DTC 75 ES. You remember this one? This is the one that the uh, drum was foobar on. Let's see if we can get it going. I'm back on the old Sony DTC 75 ES. Now, you guys remember this one before? This is the one that uh, had a bad drum motor. And, uh, well, finding a drum motor, something that's next to impossible, right? But I had donated to me a full chassis. Now, this is from, uh, this is, might have been from like a 680 or one of the other, but it's the same, I believe this one's the same mechanism. So, what we're going to try on this one is I'm just going to swap the entire mechanism. Uh, this one here, the drum is not, well, it's not seized or anything. The other, This one here, the other one, the drum was stuck because there was a screw that was stuck in the bottom of, to the, one of the magnets, which is shorted out the IC below it. So, I can swap the drum or swap the whole mechanism. This mechanism looks to be, physically looks to be in good shape. So, we're going to swap out the mechanism and see if I can turn this into a working DTC 75 ES to add to my collection. So in the top we remove the screws that hold the chassis in place. Before I remove the chassis I have to remember to remove the front cover. Take the front tape door off. So we'll just power it up and open it. Remove the tape door. And then the chassis just lifts out. Should be able to unplug all the plugs on this one and uh, plug in the other one. There are actually only three that I need to unplug from this side of the chassis, which is that one and this one over here and this other big one. These are the three that lead over to the board. The other one's unplugged from the other side. So we'll take these three off. And then we'll unplug these other connectors from the main board. I'm just going to take off this, this bracket. And I'll do the rest of these connectors. That one. And this one. That one unplugs from here. And there's one more. This is black one here. And that should separate. Oh, and of course the head. The head preamp. And that should separate this. Oh, and one more. One more over here from the mode switch. Okay, that's got that old chassis off. Let's start out with the new chassis. We have our mode switch plug over here first. that plug and the red plug over here and it's a black plug that goes in over here they're keyed so they only go in one way and then we've got the preamp plug that goes in over here. And another one's plugged in. There. And then of course all these just fit into this 
wiring harness that locks shut. That should do it for the chassis change. Now I don't know if there's any problems with this chassis. I guess we'll find that out soon enough. But let's pop the chassis back into the, uh, the unit. We'll deal with the wires later, dressing them later. I just want to see whether this thing's going to work. So we'll drop the chassis down into place. And I'll put one or two screws in just to hold the, uh, the unit in, in place so it doesn't move when it's operating. Because there's a good chance it's coming out again anyway, right? I'm sure there's probably something wrong with this chassis. Maybe it does work, maybe it doesn't. Don't know find that out in a few minutes so let's uh, power the unit up and see whether it opens first okay open our part works let's put a tape in it and see if it plays doesn't load doesn't load so this mechanism has a problem I manually take the tape out and uh, see if the mechanism will turn by hand is it jammed or something else if I turn the loading gear here by hand what happens maybe it's gummed up or is it something else okay I got the tape to load Will it play? So I'll pull the chassis again. And uh, it may be it may be simpler to swap the whole head drum. Because I think it just screws in with three screws. Looks like it's only held in place by like three three screws under the bracket here so it might be faster just to do that than figure out what's wrong with this other chassis because I think although I don't know whether this chassis is any good or not this one may have its own problems let's just take a look at this one and see what this one's doing why it's sticking is it just the brakes that are gone bad Looks like we have a stock pinch roller as it's not going into place. You see, it's missing. Of course, I can't see what the camera sees at the moment, but I'll spot it in about 10 seconds. It's almost like the pinch roller is not engaging. Is, that, is, it, is, engage, is it engaging? Oh, you know what? The pinch roller is stuck. That's the problem. That's the problem with this one. The pinch roller arm is stuck. Or it's not going into place when it threads. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the original mechanism back in and we'll do the drum swap and get the other one going rather than take this one all apart and see what's causing it like it's not the, the the arm is not stuck but it's not going into place it's it is turning stiff so somewhere in here it's gummed up so the other mechanism isn't gummed up so let's go to the other mechanism and uh, 
we'll swap the head because I already went through and lubricated the other one. So let's uh, do that. Let's gonna try something on here. This is the original mechanism, by the way, back in this one. Before I change out the drum motor, the drum drive I see is on this little board. If I'm not, if I remember correctly, let's just swap the board over. Let's see whether the drive I see that was bad on the board, or whether it's the, I think it's the motor itself that was shot. Because I think if I remember correctly, when I measured it, there was, there was a, a voltage there, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't spinning but let's just try swapping the, the board before I change the drum so we'll see there's a the drive IC is on here so we'll swap the board and if that doesn't do it, then we'll swap the drum motor. Always good to have spare parts because you know they don't make they don't make the DAT machines anymore. They haven't made them for about 15 or more years now. So anytime you can get your hands on spare parts. And I have two other decks like this that use the same mechanism. I have a 680 and another 75 ES. So having a spare chassis kicking around, especially if it's got good heads, is always um, a bonus. I got everything plugged in there. Let's try it out and see what happens. power is it going to spin or is it not it's not okay so now I know what it is it is what I first diagnosed the motor so let's swap that over then likely I'll have to remove this screw here and this one here and flip this part of the chassis out of the way. screws that hold the drum in place. Get that unplugged. Should be a ground screw here that comes out. And then the three that hold the whole assembly in place. the head drum see it's it's all one solid assembly and the problem is there's another connector that goes from the coil pack up into an FG sensor which is in the upper part of the drum that's why I couldn't just change the coil pack and uh, whether the head can be changed individually I think this one these were, were purchased they were purchased as an entire assembly anyway this is a, a good head so let's plug this one in to the other chassis that we know is good and I'll just put this uh, other piece back in if I remember how it goes and we didn't like it okay and the other one will remove the power connector for that bad motor and I gotta remove the 
cassette housing bracket to uh, get clearance so that requires again taking out these screws this clips in it, it just rides along the outside track here it's, uh, it's actually quite easy to take this piece out okay now I'll unplug the wires from the preamp and again remove the four screws and the head drum should come out and the new head drum should slip right in there no problem and I don't anticipate having to do much in the way of alignment just because of the way it's mounted it should uh, it should seat no problem I should put an X on this one just so that I don't get them mixed up not that I'll do that but Okay, this head drum, lift out just like that, put that one over on the other side, grab the good one, and drop the good one in place. It is keyed so it sits in the chassis like it's supposed to, and with any luck this will work. And I will get sound out of this deck, providing that there's nothing else wrong with the deck itself. Because I've never had any sound out of this. This one was given to me, and uh, it's never worked. So I don't know whether there's any other, other, any other problems whatsoever with it. There could be other problems that uh, I'm unaware of at this point. But don't worry, there are. We'll deal with that when I get to it. I'm not tightening these up super tight. I'm just kind of putting them in loosely so that the the uh, drum can be centered once I uh, get the screws kind of threaded in. We'll center it, make sure it's seated properly, and then tighten them down. And the one last ground screw. I will be putting that dead drum, by the way, back on the other chassis. I'm done just for, even though the, the drum is shot, I'll put it on there just in case. In case I ever need to try to swap the head disc. Okay, plug the preamp wires back in, and then the bottom side I just have to fish out. Oh, it's already there. Look at that. Make it nice and easy for me. Just plug this straight in, and put the basket back on, and uh, try it out. Get that part and now the basket the basket case as we call it it goes back in kind of like this there's a pin that fits in through a slot here and it just sits in place like that And run the mechanism through its paces by hand to make sure it closes like properly like it does switch is activating over here okay I think everything is plugged in let's uh, give it a try and see if we get any sound power on open sesame Okay, what's the problem now?
we're getting there. We got something, but it's still not working properly. This mechanism still obviously has a problem. This one appears that the take up or the supply is not turning. Let's see what happens when I put it in play. I'll take this train out. Something's sticking on the uh, supply side. Oh, you know what? Is that tension arm going into place or not? That tension arm is not. Okay, we got a back tension problem on this one. It looks like this tension arm is not going into place. What happens if we go into rewind or fast forward? Rewind, nothing. Okay, stop. We're gonna eat a tape here if we're not careful. And we just did. So this one's got a transport problem. We will deal with that. Both of them had transport problems. Oh, the fun. Oh, the fun of working on old DAT recorders. I think the problem with this is this back tension band. This, is this back tension band has kind of been crunched at some point. So I think that's what's causing the problem with it. I'm going to swap the back tension band from the other one. I guess the easiest way to do that will be to remove this, um, this cassette basket again. We'll take it off the other one first so I can see how it's done. So here's the back tension band here. And it's just held in place by one screw. So if I undo the screw, I should be able to lift the band off and unclip it from I think it unclips from this arm. If I'm not mistaken, I should just be able to turn it around and it should pop out. Just like that. Just got a little clip on the end that just has to fit into the hole. And fits in there a little bit better. Might it actually work? Uh, I think my tape's damaged there a bit. Let's just go past that. There we go. Tape's got crunched a bit at the beginning. Now this is a music bakery track, yeah, but I know it's going to get a tape. fake copyright claim because it does every time I use it. So I'm going to talk over it. I'm going to kind of bypass this track. I would say that this is working. This deck is functional. Let's try AMS to the next track. The effing scammers that make claims on royalty free just drives me crazy. Right now. Another DTC 75 ES in my collection. So what we've got here is we've got the original chassis from this one. This is the one that was, this is the donated chassis. I pulled the head drum off this one and I pulled off the uh, back tension band because this one was damaged. That appears to be working. We'll just check the, 
search back for a track as well and make sure everything's working and then I will put it together. So there's, let's go back a track. That appears to be working. Let's rewind the tape back and eject it, including the damage on this tape at the beginning. So let's mount the chassis. Okay, let's just test it out now, see whether it works. Excellent! I have the two DAT um, covers. Gotta decide which one looks better. That yeah, looks a bit better. Now all I gotta do is put a light in here. There's no light. There's no light behind here, so uh, that's all I gotta do now is put a light in there, and then this one's gonna look like a million bucks. Got a small strip of LEDs. I'm just gonna attach a piece of wire. These are used. Attach a piece of wire on this, and I'm gonna take this and stick it up underneath in here, and that should provide plenty of light to light up the tape compartment. So, double sided tape on this doesn't seem to be that good. Oh well, we'll stick some more double sided tape on and uh, stick these up underneath there. It's gonna find a piece of wire. We'll get these hooked up and we'll tap them onto the 12 volt power supply over here. Piece of wire. And which one's positive? It is, looks like this one. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because when I hook them up, they're either gonna work or they're not, right? Okay, I'm just going to stick these into the unit itself. Positives to here. And negative to the other side of this cap. This is unfiltered, so that should be fine. Okay, let's just see how these lights look. There, that's a bit better. Hopefully they won't fall down. Yeah, it looks great. Only two of the LEDs are working on that strip. Oh well. Sounding good. I get the scope on here. We'll take a look at the alignment. Here's our RF test point. I just stuck a little extension made of solder onto the test point there so that I have a place to anchor the clip to, the probe. 
And let's uh, take a look at what our signal looks like. That's my phone causing that, by the way. My, I can hear my phone buzzing away. Let's see if I can bring that up a little bit better. My probe is also probably uh, um, detuning it slightly. Well, the guide posts are tight on this, it's good. Try a different screwdriver. See whether they're loose and if I can make any improvement to them. Looking pretty darn good actually. Oops. I think that's uh, pretty close. Try a couple of other tapes. Since this tape was recorded on my uh, DA40, uh, good interchangeability so far. I'll try another tape on it. There you go, unquestionably the greatest song the Beatles ever did. And the last song they ever recorded too. Well there it is, it's all back together. I've finished listening to my Beatles tape there for a bit. And uh, it's working perfectly. As I say, I wish I could play I wish I could play this, but unfortunately, yeah, I'd probably get hit for just that little bit, knowing the Beatles. But um, yeah, this one's done. It's working. Everything's working on it. It looks great. And uh, this one is now going to go into my collection. I've got two of these. Now, oh, there's a cab that's kind of now. Oh well, can't be perfect, right? But um, yeah, this one here, as I say, this is now into my collection. I'm going to play it for a while here. I got some other tapes. I'm going to run through it, and uh, let it play for a bit. I got one here that says it's got a bunch of dropouts on it. Wherever I, er, errors, that, that one's got errors on it. It's a longer tape though, so I'll let this one play for a bit. But uh, as far as the video is concerned. We're done. You can't play that, obviously, but uh, yeah, that tape's got some major dropouts. It's got a lot of passes, and it was a tape that was given to me, a used tape that was given to me, too. In fact, all these tapes I've got here, all these little short tapes, I got these from a studio. God knows how many copies or how many passes they've got on them. But they, you know, they were used in a recording studio. And uh, the guy gave me a bunch of tapes. He had an add, add up on Craigslist said, free dat tape. So I said, sure, why not? And I, I got like, a box of 100 tapes, but many of them were a little short, like 15 minute and, and 19 minute and 16 minute tapes. They were obviously used for uh, commercials. For They were doing radio commercials. So some of these things could have some of them had the commercials on them, but some of these tapes could have literally hundreds and hundreds of passes because I'm sure they, they reuse their tapes repeatedly. Anyway, this one's done. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.